And then we find that next word is the word us. For a child was born for us, for our benefit, for the meeting of the need of our life, for our blessing, for our salvation. This child has been born for our redemption. This child has been born for our peace. A son will be given to us and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be the sovereign one. He will be the Lord. He will be the one uh, upon which all of the uh, powers and, and the uh, governments of man would rest on his shoulders and certainly we look forward to that glorious day that that is fully realized, don't we? The Lord Jesus Christ is Lord indeed, and we confess Him as Lord in order for us to receive that salvation that He has provided for us and to bring us into right relationship with God. The government will be on His shoulders, and He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, El Gibor. The word Gibor, translated here, Mighty, is also translated in other verses of scriptures as Great. That speaks of the magnificence of God, the greatness of God beyond measure, beyond our ability to comprehend, and beyond our ability to communicate is the greatness, the magnificence of God. And it also is translated with the word warrior, and God is the warrior for his own glory, and for his honor, and for real righteousness. He is the mighty God, the eternal Father, and the Prince of Peace. Shar Shalom. Say that. Sar Shalom. I just taught you some Hebrew. Sar Shalom. The Prince of Peace. Shalom. That's an interesting term. Shalom. Uh, that has been long used. That Hebrew word has long been used as a greeting. And it is a greeting that is a greeting of prayer. A one word prayer. To greet someone rightly with the word shalom, then you are, you are praying that they will know peace, real peace, great peace of heart and great peace of, of soul. Sar shalom. The International Bible uh, Encyclopedia, Standard Bible Encyclopedia says this about that word shalom. It says it's the one of the most significant theological terms in Scripture. It has a wide semantic range stressing various nuances of its basic meaning, which is totality or completeness. You see, you and I are made complete. That which is missing in our life is fulfilled through the Lord Jesus Christ. That which sin has so depleted from us and has so ruined us by is now taken care of by Jesus. And we have shalom. We have completion in the Lord Jesus. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, in Him you are complete. So it includes the nuances of fulfillment, completion, maturity, soundness, wholeness, community, harmony, tranquility, security, well-being, welfare, friendship, agreement, success, and true prosperity. All of that is communicated in that word peace. And so I would present to you today that, that when we talk about being saved, we talk about doing what? We have found real peace. Have you heard people talk about the need of making peace with God. Well, I'm glad that really it's not that you and I make peace with God, but that God has given us peace in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We receive peace. We receive shalom from the Lord. And then in verse 7, the Bible says, the dominion, talking about His rule, His reign, will be vast. I tell you, it will fill all of eternity and all of the universe one day. The dominion will be vast and its prosperity. Some translations use the word peace there and rightly so because again it is the word shalom. The uh, translators in, in the writing of the Holman uh, Christian Standard Bible uses the word prosperity there because we in our English uh, language in the, 
in our semantics, we would use that word peace primarily to speak about tranquility and, and uh, the doing away of all and rest. But it's so much more than that. It is real enrichment. It is real life. It is all that brings real satisfaction and real fulfillment to us. It brings us into total relationship with God. This dominion will never end. He will reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now on and forever. And the Bible tells us that we know this is going to be true because the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish it. And so those verses certainly have present day application, but they look forward also to that time in which God will ultimately fully judge all of sin and sin will be totally obliterated at the great white throne judgment and the righteousness of God will not only rule but will permeate all of the universe and all of the effects, all of the consequences of sin will be removed and we will have peace. Amen. How wonderful and glorious is our future. There's another prophecy in the book of Isaiah. Those prophecies given to us 700 years before the birth of Christ. Another prophecy in the book of Isaiah that also shows us how that this peace would come to us in the present day and in our experience and it would be for all of eternity. It's found in Isaiah chapter 53 verses 3 through 6. We just heard about these scars, how the Lord came for the purpose of of bearing our sin and dying in our place. And, and He came to be scarred for us so that we would be brought into shalom, so that we would be brought into real peace. And Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 6 reads as follows. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He is despised and yet and we did not esteem him. We had no value of him. We would mock him. We would ridicule him. We would cry out crucify him. Crucify him. And surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken. It was our desire to see him crucified and to remove him from human life. We esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Man did not realize that Jesus was coming to bear our sin and to die in our place and to experience the wrath and the judgment of God that we deserve himself so that we could be reconciled fully to God. He was wounded for our transgressions because you and I have sinned. And he was bruised for our iniquities. Now understand that word bruised. Sometimes I'll notice that I've got a little bruise on my skin somewhere. And I sometimes will know where it came from. Other times I, I won't. Sometimes there's a little bit of discomfort when you touch the bruised area. And sometimes you can hardly tell that is there. The word bruise that is used here, that the word is maduka, and it and it really means crushed. It's not a slight bruise that Jesus took. Oh, you read the crucifixion of Jesus and you see how Christ was crushed for our sins. Oh, the price that Jesus paid so that you could have peace. Oh, the price that Christ paid so that I could have peace. He was bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. All oh, we like sheep have gone astray we turned everyone unto our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Do you understand when the angel said peace on earth? What that Peace would cost that baby who was born. Oh, we, you know, we, we look at those words and we see those words on an ornament, maybe on a tree. Peace on earth. We, 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 we talk about peace and we think about peace, but I tell you, this peace came at a high price. Amen. It came at a high price. 
Jesus was born, not just to give us a beautiful, little, peaceful, nativity scene for us to put on a coffee table or on a mat. The real peace that Jesus came, the Prince of Peace, the real peace was purchased for us with His life and His blood on the cross. And when the angel would say peace on earth, that peace would be dependent upon Christ embracing the cross and dying there in my place, in your place, that he might experience the judgment of God upon himself that I deserve and that he might buy my forgiveness with his blood. Peace. That's why Christmas is such a big deal. A Savior has come. That's why Christmas is so important. The Prince of Peace came in this world on the mission for peace. You say, well, how do I enter into shalom? How do I enter into peace? How do I experience this peace? The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 10, that if you will believe in your heart, if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if you will believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and understand that he died for your sin, that he rose again from the grave, signifying the fact that he had accomplished in his death what he came to accomplish. Christ died for our sins and rose again. If you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that means he's boss. That implies that I repent of my sin and I acknowledge that my life is to be lived the way he wants me. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. You will 